We have got a tutorial for you this week, but we just wanted to take a moment, sit back and look at how things have gone over the last year. And really to thank all of you for supporting us and the team here at HitFilm. We've got over 100,000 subscribers now on YouTube, but even more than that, we've got over 825,000 users of the software. That's over half a million more than this time last year, which is huge. The software is also bundled with more products than ever before. So if you're buying other video software, you're increasingly likely to get some HitFilm software in there too. With HitFilm Pro 2017, we added more user requested features than we ever have done before. And we're not done yet with that software. There's some massive updates coming next year. Speaking of next year, we have more new launches coming next year than we've ever had before. Also, what's really exciting is we've seen HitFilm technology being used by some of the YouTubers we love, whether that's Film Riot and Ryan Connolly, Mike Diva or Corridor Digital. In fact, you can see some of these examples on the video playing on the front page of our website. And as I'm sure most of you know, last week we released our Project Rebellion, our Star Wars fan film. It's pretty much the biggest film project that we've made so far. Loads of tutorials there for Express users. And next year we'll be doing tutorials for Pro users too, so you can see how we did that Walker shot at the end, and uh, maybe we'll be giving away that 3D model. But lastly, I'd really like to thank all of you for the support that you've given HitFilm this year. Your comments, whether it's on YouTube or on our forums, mean a great deal to us and they help us shape the product and move it forward. So this week we're going to actually pass you over to our friends at New Blue and Sean is going to take you through how to use Amplify and Title the Pro to make some amazing cinematic comic book style titles inside HitFilm. Over to you Sean. My name is Sean and today I'm going to show you how to create an epic intro to your next film using a few of the over 53 plugins that can be found in Amplify for HitFilm. Amplify is an extensive suite of video plugins that's designed to address most of the needs you'll have in your videos. The sequence we're working with today uses the Titler Pro plugin and the Colorfast plugin and quite a few others to a lesser degree. So first, let's watch the sequence and then break down how to achieve this look using Amplify. So right off the bat, we've got our epic comic book style cinematic introduction that shows the entire world will probably be in danger at some point, as the world is wont to do in comic book movies. And shortly after that, we've got the title card. Now this card didn't require any 3D animation or external programs. It was created entirely in HitFilm using Titler Pro, and I'd like to walk you through how to do that. Here we've got our video project in HitFilm. We've got our beginning intro sequence that's completed, and then basically just a bunch of raw footage after that. So the first thing I'd like to do is drop a blank event into our timeline. This is going to be the video event that we add the Titler Pro effect to, and it's just an empty image file. Now we'll add the Titler Pro effect by finding it in the effects tab and dragging it onto our blank event. You'll know it worked because you'll see the words enter text in the preview window, but we need to open the title designer to start working on the title. So you do that by expanding the Titler Pro effect in the control tab and clicking open Titler Pro. The first screen you'll see is the quick edit interface. From here you can preview and make quick changes to all the titles in your project, but we want to create a title from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select our new title and click open title designer. Now, this is where you'll be creating and editing your titles, and you'd be surprised with how quickly and easily they can come together. The first thing we want to do is change our text to the title of the film, and then change our font. We'll blow it up just a bit and increase the kerning and then change the face texture under the style tab by clicking the image slash video button and selecting the appropriate texture. Of course we pre-selected these ahead of time because it really wouldn't be interesting to sit and watch me scroll through 30 minutes of finding the right textures. So we'll finish up the title by adding some extrusion and beveling, which is really a subjective area, so we're just gonna eyeball it. And then increase the shininess all the way up to 100 to really amplify the light that we're eventually going to add into this scene. Now, believe it or not, our text portion is already done, but we've still gotta add one more line of text, so we'll do that by clicking Add Paragraph, 
moving it straight up by holding shift while we drag, and changing the text to fit the style of the bottom line. And here we're doing the exact same thing as before, increasing the kerning to whatever we think is fitting, resizing it, adding a texture, and adjusting the extrusion and beveling so it all just looks right. I think that's about good, so let's do the background. The background is just a simple texture. So we'll click Add Shape, and then select Rectangle. Change the texture using the same process as we did for both of our text events, and then drag it to fill the entire frame. Of course, now we can't see the text, so we'll go ahead and drag it to the bottom layer in the timeline. The last element we need to add is the lens flare. The process should seem pretty familiar at this point. Let's go ahead and add a rectangle, select the corresponding texture, resize it as necessary. But we are going to change its blending mode to something a little more suitable to a lens flare. So let's open the effects tab and select the additive blending mode. At this point, it's a little hard to read the text, but we'll address that with lighting when the time comes. Right now, we want to add our animations, which we can accomplish by using some simple keyframing. But before we do that, I'd like to rename my objects, just so we have better points of reference. The first bit we'll do is give the background a slow, subtle expansion. So we'll select our rectangle, open the Object tab, and click Turn on Keyframing. You'll notice a tiny circle at the beginning of the rectangle event in the timeline which represents our first keyframe. To give it that subtle zoom, let's navigate to the end of the timeline, and then increase the scale setting. Now when we go back and press play, we'll see the background slowly growing larger. In addition to simple two-dimensional changes, Paddler Pro also allows you to make adjustments along the z-axis. We'll be taking advantage of this by making the text look like it's flying in from behind the camera. We'll start by selecting our aviator's text, turning on keyframing, as well as give it smooth interpolation so it's got a smoother landing. Since the text is already in the position we want it to end in, we'll create a new keyframe a little over one second in by pressing the plus button in the sidebar, and then go back to the first keyframe to make our changes. All we want to do from here is make it come from behind the camera. So we'll select the Z-axis under position and crank it up so that it's barely out of frame. Press play and it looks uh, probably a little faster than we want, but we can fix that by just dragging the second keyframe to be a little further out. Now when we play it again, it looks much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the marble text. Turn on keyframing, interpolation, create a second keyframe, Go back to the first keyframe and blow up the z-axis. Looking at it done like this, I don't quite like how they come in at the same time, so we're going to push the second line out about a half a second by shortening its overall length and then dragging it over. And then it looks pretty awful to have the smaller text in front. We're going to drag the marble layer to be behind the aviator's layer. Finally, we're going to make our lens flare come in after the text has settled, and give it an x-axis rotation to make it look like it's appearing naturally. We also want to make it fade out, which we could do by adding another keyframe and sliding the opacity slider, but I like to keep my keyframes for motion only when I can help it. So what we can do is open the library and drag a fade transition onto the end portion of the lens flare event, that way it's added as an outro and then just adjust our animation and event lengths from there. I'll take a minute to play around with this stuff. And I think that looks about good. With the bulk of the title in place, we just need to make some finishing touches from inside the scene tab. Here is where we'll make those lighting changes we talked about earlier. Of course, if you've ever worked with lighting, you know that you start with a general idea and then basically guess and check until you've got what you're happy with. Here, the basic idea is to have the text start out dark and then come into the light as it flies in. I think I can accomplish that using just a directional light and a spotlight. Now, as we drag the playhead forward, we see our text start out dark and then come into the light, which is exactly what we wanted. So, believe it or not, our main title is done. Just exit the title designer and then close out of the quick edit interface, and it's updated live in the HitFilm timeline. 
And as you recall, we didn't just cut into and out of the title card. The opening scene seemed to explode into the card, and we had a comic book style page flipping outro. These effects were created using a couple of Amplify's transitions. The first one is called Traveling Rays, and even the default settings are enough to add some character to this cut, but we can use the controls menu to edit the parameters of the transition, namely scrolling through a few of the presets until we see one that works, which is Heatwave. It's actually almost perfect for this. And then just reducing the liquify settings, doesn't make sense to have a lot of liquid out in space, and increasing the release time. That looks good to me. We use the same process for the outro transitions. Select roll from the list, drag it between events, and for this one, I think the broken movie preset is going to be perfect. Now, luckily, this one can be used as is without having to adjust any of its settings from there. In addition to titles and transitions, Amplify comes with a wide variety of video effects and filters that range from active camera, which mimics the motion of handheld cameras, to zoom blur, which we've used here in conjunction with RGB shift to make sort of a shaky, drug-filled flashback that represents the production of what must be some kind of super drug that the antagonist is clearly using to poison the population or finance a super weapon or some other evil deed. At any rate, you can achieve a pretty unique look by combining a few of the effects that come with Amplify. We've just dropped the effects straight onto the video events here, but if you want to keyframe any aspect of your effects, you can turn your clip into a composite shot and add the effects from there. Here we've got the leader of our rogue military outfit who's supposed to be hiding out in the desert somewhere, but our raw footage is it's too cool and undersaturated. We need to make it brighter and oranger, like the sun is beating down on our characters. We'll start by expanding the color fast tab in the effect controls and selecting the whitest white in our image, which appears to be somewhere on this piece of building back here. This will shift the colors in the image to be a little more natural, making follow-up adjustments easier to make. I'll make some quick primary adjustments here, raise the saturation and brightness, gamma, and then from there we'll be making most of our changes in the secondary corrections tab. A color fast is able to make a distinction between the highs, mids, and shadows, so we'll show the highlights mask and make changes to the luminance range to make sure our light spots are covered, and then do the same thing for our shadows. Now, after enabling highlight corrections, we can select a tint and only the areas that appeared red on the highlights mask will be affected. By making some adjustments to the tint, saturation, and level sliders, we can get a nice warm look for our shot. We can repeat the same process for the midtones and eventually the shadows to get the real fine-tuned color correction that we're looking for. For a finishing touch, I'd like to give the original character a more natural hue, so we're going to use the skin mask feature to retain some of his original color. We'll select skin mask and adjust the sensitivity so that only his skin is showing. We'll soften the edges a bit, and turn off the mask so we can see what we're doing, and would you look at that, our character no longer has jaundice. So, I think this footage is perfect. When we toggle color fast on and off, it looks like the difference between an undersaturated shot on a cloudy winter day and some overbearing sunlight on a military compound somewhere in the desert. So that concludes our quick briefing on some of the things you can accomplish in Amplify and how to achieve them. If you're interested in checking out more, head on over to newbluefx.com.